right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask about doing this uh, hide videos from start to finish. So I don't have um, hides going in the process, you know, from point A to B to C. But I can give you an idea of how how we do this and. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and I've read a lot of books. Um, you know, I, and I sort of created my own process that works for me. And what works for me might not work uh, from, for somebody else, say up north or the east or the, or the west because uh, the climate's different. Here we got a, a lot of humidity and stuff, but uh, one of the main uh, videos that that I sort of based my process off of <clears throat> on YouTube. Uh, you can find it. I think the guy's name on YouTube is uh, Survival HT, and the title of the video is Tanning Fur Hides, and I don't do the exact process he does, but it's like I say, um, it works for me. And this guy is from, I think, Louisiana, from, from how it sounds, so, you know, I figured, you know, I should probably try his process or, you know, you know, the, the basics of his process because they're hot, they're, you know, they got a lot of humidity like we have here, so, I mean, and it, and it works for me, but I've seen egg tanning videos, brain tanning videos, and, you know, I haven't tried every process, but this what I'm doing has, has worked so far, but, um, so, in the beginning, when you have... You know, a fresh animal, say a small animal, a coon, possum. I got these up here. And all this is, is just two strings even, loops tied in them. You know, you loop them back around and put a back leg in there. Put the other back leg in there. And you wring the back foot. And you can sort of see on these right here. <clears throat> so this was the back legs. You ring it like around the ankle, on both sides, and then you cut. From there, inside the leg, you can see how the fur changes colors, and you can see how this cut was made. Right here where the fur changes colors, you go from the ankle to the butthole. That's the butthole right there. And you just start skinning it out, you know, and it, it pretty much, you know, goes inside out like a sock, and then... You know, you ring, you ring your front legs, and um, you know you pull these through, you pull the legs through. But uh, the main thing to be careful with is I, I'm making a purse out of this one, and, and this is how you know if you've got a decent skinner. Skinning is everything. This is the ears. If you get too close, you will have a cut in the ear. And what you got to pay attention to is these eyes right here. They got a little black ring in there and the lips. If you got your lips intact and this little black ring around the eyes intact and the nose, then whoever skint that animal did a good job. And you can see on this one, I sort of slipped up a little bit. I make mistakes from time to time. But um, all in all, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good skinner. But I mean, the bobcat, <coughs> all its eyes, ears, nose everything is intact this little hide right here that one was like the second or third hide i had skinned that day and i was ready to quit but you can see no ears have cuts this was a uh, where i knocked it in the head so you're gonna have little flaws like that when uh you have to kill the animal all the eyes are intact the lips and that's what's important and uh you can see these hides are are sort of stiff but uh, to make your hide soft, I mean, anybody can dry out a hide, and it won't stink, but uh, it'll be hard. And one of the reasons I'm doing these videos is because there's a couple tricks that I've learned. Like, this bobcat is really soft. I did a really good job on this thing. It's flexible. It's soft. It holds its hair good. But um, there's multiple layers to animal skin, and this is one of my books. That I've read my dad bought me this he's got a catalog and these books are like three bucks a piece 
but <clears throat> this shows a diagram of animal skin. You have the epidermis, which is two layers, A and a B, which hold basically all the hair. And then you have the derma layer and then the fatty tissue. So after you skin your animal, you're going to soak it in brine water for like, I don't know, overnight, at least 12 hours. Stir it occasionally if you can. But then what that brine water does, which is this right here, and this was just for five gallons of water, I was told to use three pounds of salt. I sort of guess it don't really matter in that process. But what that salt does is it pulls all of the blood and all of the body fluids off of that hide. And when you when you do that, that's that's your first step. So you skin your animal and you got your hide and you take it to the water hose and you clean all the mud, the blood, everything you can. You wring it out and you soak it in this brine water. And the thing about salt is you can't use iodized salt. You can use any kind of salt except iodized salt. Uh, sea salt, ice cream salt, rock salt. Um, if it's really humid, you might want to put your salt in a blender and, and powder it. it. It seems to work a lot better. It dissolves a lot better. Your water don't have to be near as hot. But, you know, this is uh, this salt right here, it's like a dollar fifty for, yeah, four pounds. And so, I mean, you can dump that whole thing in there, and it's not going to hurt anything. But um, you, you can't overdo it on the salt, really. So after you <clears throat> took your hide and soaked it in the brine water for 24 hours, you can see how bloody and, and muddy and stuff that water is. That water ain't no good no more. You just throw it away. But um, after that, you wring that hide out the best you can. And I take mine and I wrap it around this pole and I wring it out just like a dish rag. As good as I can. And I bring it over here to this board. And you can see all this salt on here. You can reuse this salt. Once it gets too saturated, you can throw it away. But as long as that salt's there and it's granulated, it's not dissolving. You can see where some of this salt has dissolved. You can see spots on the porch where it's dissolved. It's only good for so long, I think. But, you know, I don't know. I usually just re redo the salt. But you lay the hide down and you just saturate it with salt. I mean, there's no given amount because you're going to use different amounts on a different size animal, different size hide. But you let it sit there for about two hours and you can actually sit out here and watch that salt pull, pull moisture out of that hide. You'll come out here and it'll be wet and slick. it look like it's sweating. And then you take and um, get you some more salt and that's why I just put my salt in here and I'll have my hide laid flat. I'll salt the board and I'll salt the hide, let it set for two hours. Then I'll come salt it a little bit more and let it set for another couple hours. And then I'll come out here and I'm, I'm using stock salt a lot of the time for this. But just the simple fact is it's no different than table salt. It's a little bit more coarse, but you can get 50 pounds of it for $5 and it's not iodized and it's cheap and it works. And so, after your hide is set out and you've salted it two different times and let it pull moisture for about two, four hours, however long you, you think you need to, I mean, you can feel that hide and feel how much moisture is in it. And after that, I'll take it and uh, I'll salt it a little bit and roll it and then salt it a little bit and roll it some more till it's rolled up in a little ball. And it'll, it'll look, I mean, it'll just look crazy like... You know, it'll be rolled up like this, and you'll have it in a layer of salt, just like that. And it'll be salt all over the place. And I take this dang board, and I prop this can up underneath it, and I let it sit here for 24 hours. And you can see right here where hides have set and just drained juice off. And it's nasty, and it's brown, and I really don't even know what it is, but it's gross, and it stinks. But um, you let that happen overnight. You know, you do that overnight. I, I've left them for as much as three days. You, you, that's okay to do if it's rainy and real humid. The last thing you want is this hide drying rolled up or you have to start the process completely over again.
all the way. And so you don't want it, you want it dry, but you don't want it completely dry. Okay, so once 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 you get get it rolled up and let it drain, you take and um, you just dump your salt, salvage what salt you can, and then it's time to flesh. And fleshing is key. Uh, the better you flesh an animal, the easier it's going to be to work to make it soft. And how I do with these small animals is I use a piece of inch and a half. A lot of people stretch these hides and I don't, and I'll get to why I don't here in a little bit. See, this one has done, shrunk up a little bit. But you know, I, I don't flesh with a, a fleshing knife. I flesh with a ulu, primitive style. And you got a sharp side and a dull side, and I always leave my sharp side up. And you just take stuff off of it. It'll just come right off, and it's that salt that helps it come off. And, uh... You just flesh like that. Now, see, this one's dry. That's not really doing anything, but it's a visual aid or whatever. On a big animal, this is a little fleshing beam I've thrown together. You don't have to have that. Uh, matter of fact, I just built it for this video. I'll probably use it to see how it works, but I probably need to put another brace up on this pipe. But uh, like a deer hide, you just take this dude after you've salted it and done the whole process and you lay it over this beam and you just flesh it. And what I found works for me is I don't just lay it here with the tail down or up. The corners are the easiest to start with. Because all this all of these this fatty layer runs a certain direction. And what you'll do is you'll find a chunk of meat and you'll start. And then you'll start fleshing and you'll flesh all the way to the end and it'll want to hang and you just push it. When this hide has been salted, it's a lot tougher than you think it is. But after you're fleshed and you've got everything off of it, you can get off of it. And I mean, this hide's done been tanned and you can see there's still pieces of fatty stuff there. It's done been broke. I've done broke this hide. You can see how soft it is. But I mean, it's, it's like leather. It basically is leather or buckskin. But um, you can make leather out of any skin. But I mean, this stuff, this is some of the stuff that's hung on the edge and it just pulled right off. But this is not a finished product yet. But um, so that's how you flesh. And I mean, it's, it's hard. And I mean, the first one you do your hands will cramp for days and the more you do it I mean you're using muscles that you don't really use for nothing else but you kind of get the hang of it and so after you're fleshed you go back to the water hose and, and, and wash it off you, you're trying to wash all this salt out and you can probably see here in this tail this is salt that was left and you're gonna have that you're never gonna get completely all the salt out of this thing no matter how much you wash it but you're trying your best so <clears throat> then it's time to put it in a pickling barrel and this is what does the actual tannin and this right here that's for five gallons of water you use three pounds of salt and one pound of alum and I use this salt, sometimes stock salt. This uh, dissolves a little better than stock salt, but if you dissolve it in hot water and then cool it off. See, this here <laughs> is alum. And they use this to make pickles, so basically you're just pickling this hide is all you're doing. And this is 1.9 ounces, and this thing is like $4, three $4. So by the time you get the salt you need and this is only for five gallons of water so I did it for ten and by the time you buy all of this stuff and mix it up you have like sixty bucks sitting in that barrel so I reuse it as much as I can and I've done this uh, I had ten gallons made up and you look, use a lot you can tell this isn't ten gallons but then when you wring your hides out some of it spills and, I mean, you eventually have to put make make a new batch. But I've been using this. 
I had 10 gallons made up at the first of deer season, and the kids got out here messing around and busted my bucket and all drained out under the house, so I had to do it again. And so, anyway, I've been using that ever since that happened. And this has tanned, I think, six deer hides, two bobcats, two coons, and a possum. And so, I mean, it, it don't hurt to reuse it. You want to stir it up, you know? But, um, so you let that set, like a hide like this takes anywhere, usually four days, three to four days, depending on the weather. If it's really cold, I'd let it sit extra time. But, um, don't never let it freeze. Of course, it, it, it's hard for it to freeze with salt in it, but it can happen. So you want to keep it stirred as much as possible. Um, this right here, the process can happen in five days, but I let this set a week, and it turned out beautiful. A deer hide, seven days, a week, you know. Uh, the thing about it is, the cool thing about this alum tan is, you cannot overdo it. You can leave that thing in there for a month and pull it out, and your hide's not hurt. It won't shed the hair. I mean, you're going to lose some hair. But back to the book here. So when you fleshed and you're ready to go in this pickling barrel, you have removed as much of this fatty tissue layer that you possibly can. You're never going to remove all of it. You're trying to get down to the derma layer. That's what makes your leather right there, that derma layer. And you can see in this diagram it shows a little bit of hairs growing down in there. And you know you're close, especially when you get up to the face of these animals you can look at it and if you look real close like right here hair will pull out you know you're close so so when you get to that point where you're you're finding a hair here and there you might as well stop put it in a pickling barrel and you let it set for a coon I guess three or four days for a deer seven days you know and then you won't pull it out of there you won't wring it out again wring it out and get all that stuff now you don't want to wash it this time it's covered in salt but you don't want to wash it I don't wash it some people do but I don't and the reason being is this thing's gonna dry and it's gonna dry with some salt on it and it's that salt I believe that helps you remove these pieces of fat now a deer and a cat is way different than a coon Coons and possums are extremely fat, and so it's really hard to get all this fatty tissue off. So what works for me is you can see this possum here. I pulled it out of the pickling barrel yesterday, and it's hanging up here to dry. And you can see little pieces of fat, but that's fine. See, that's little pieces of fat. That's fine. That'll dry out. This thing will sit out here and dry, and it'll get semi stiff and when it does you want to work it and what you're doing is you're working this fat back into this skin so you're oiling this skin and you work it once and you hang it back up to dry and sometimes like the you can kind of tell after you do one or two you got a timeline you know you can feel a hide and you say well this thing if i take it in today it would be dry by tomorrow night you, you just you, you you learn you learn how dry one gets and, and when you, when I'm saying work this hide what I'm talking about is you basically have a tan hide already it's just stiff so you just take this thing and you can see if you look right here this is why I don't stretch hides a lot of old timers stretch them but when you bend it you can actually see the fibers of the derma layer separate and see how it turns white real white that's what you're doing see how my hands are greasy that's that coon fat and this has done been worked once and it's dried again and you want to stay working that oil into the skin because that's what's going to make it soft and you just take it start in one corner and start working move down a little bit and start working 
and that's all there is to it really it's a lot of work but you can see the difference what you're doing is you're peeling this excess fatty layer off so that's why it don't matter if you get it off so you work this and work it in and then I mean see how much softer that is compared you can't even hardly pinch this right here and roll it between your fingers but on this other side you can that's the difference it makes and you're breaking the fibers and allowing this to stretch and so how this thing wouldn't fit in that pipe while ago you can get up here and work this neck and I'll prove that stretching it on a board or a frame is useless because that's what you're doing when you break your hide so this this pipe wouldn't go all the way in its neck while ago now since it's been broke a lot more it go all the way to the head now so I mean it stretches as you go and uh, that's why I don't stretch them in a frame or on a board. But, um, you know, that little book was like three or four bucks. And it gives you all kind of patterns on how to build moccasins, how to build hats, gloves, all kind of stuff out of this, these things. But um, you got these deer, and they're not so fat. They're not such a fatty animal. So you're not having to break them two or three times, but when they dry, they dry extremely hard. So what you do is you lay this deer hide out and you can watch it change color as it dries. And um, this is broke pretty good. But the best way to break these deer hides is this crow foot. Seems crazy, but that's the best breaking tool that I've found so far. And you just lay it on a piece of plywood where you don't have these lines because that will cut your hide. And you just take it and rake it and it stretches as you go. You can see it stretching more right now. And it makes it way softer. But um, after that, I'll break it and get it loose to where you can work it a little bit. And then I'll work it over that beam. And when you look at a hide that's been commercially tanned, you say, well, you don't have all this stuff on there. And the reason for that is, and I normally don't do it, you know, but you can. They're sanded. They sand them. And 100 grit sandpaper will take all of this off and you're finished with a, a finished piece of leather. And so you can just take and sand it. And then it'll, this is 150 grit, so it won't take off as much. But that's just a lot of extra work. And, you know, I'm building these leather projects for me. And all of this little stuff don't bother me. But one thing about these bigger hides that don't have a lot of fat in them. And this is just from being in the south. You see how malleable this hide is this thing will trick you because we have high humidity it's rained here this morning and with that high humidity it's never going to completely dry it'll be dry it'll be dry enough to work and make something out of but you make something out of this dude out here in this weather and then take it in the house for three days it'll get so stiff it'll be unbelievable and so since deer's not such a fatty animal you want to take you some peanut oil, olive oil, olive oil, neat's foot oil, any kind of oil of work, vegetable oil, and you want to wipe the leather side of this down with some oil, and you want to work it on that beam. You want to work that oil into this hide. And you might want to do it two or three times, but by the time, say, you make a bag out of this thing, and you got it sewed up here and everything, it's pretty much water resistant because this animal I mean when it rains and the skins on the animal they never get wet down to the bone I mean 
the reason these hides take to so long <coughs> to tan is because that water has to soak all the way through this. And removing that fatty layer helps it penetrate this dermal layer. So you can't tan a hide without fleshing it. It's got to be done. But uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, pretty much the process from point A to point B. Um, once you once you have this and you've worked with it and you broke it down, sanded it if that's what you want to do, you can make something out of it. This in here is going to be a purse. We're going to flip this around and we're going to cut this neck right here. We're going to stretch it out flat and we're going to cut it here and I'm going to flip it over so the pretty side of the hide will show and I'm going to cut from here to there, from here to there, and then I'm going to sew this part flipped around to here and cut this in a V so you'll have the head as a flap. I'm going to turn these legs inside out. I'm going to take a piece of grass rope and I'm going to sew it in here and loop around and sew it in there and that's going to be the handle and I'm going to sew up the bottom and that's going to be the bottom of the purse and we're going to leave the tail on it. There's numerous ways to do this. If you wanted to build a hat, you would take this dude and lay it flat after you've worked it and cut it from here all the way down and lay it out and you'd measure the roundness of your head with a cloth tape or something or a piece of string and find something about that round put on here and you would lay it out and leave the neck. Of course, you'd cut this part off and have this part open and you use all of this for the sides. And you go about three and a half inches. So, anyway, we'll do that on another video. And, and I said that um, I'm going to go over the stuff I use on my trap line and how I do it. We're going to do that another day. Sort of got to get my stuff together. But uh, a lot of people tell us, you know, you need a YouTube channel. You need to be uh, getting sponsors. And I appreciate everybody supporting us. And Katie and Aaron, I, I really appreciate the little uh, stiff, bendy, flexy thing. I don't know what it is, but that's going to help out a lot. But Because uh, it can hold the camera. But um, we do have a YouTube channel. We've got, I think, two subscribers to it. Uh, one of our videos has got about 400 views. But the thing about that is, is... We don't have any editing software, and our computer's like nine days older than water. And so everything we do has to be done by the phone, and it's just a really slow process, and we're trying to move it forward, but we're doing the best we can with what we have. And uh, our YouTube channel is The Bearded Brock and Family, and uh, we got a couple videos up. I, Amanda got the video from this morning with uh, catching just a coon foot uploaded. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna work on these things and I've got tons of videos and I mean my phone I have to use Amanda's phone my phone has got so many videos saved on it that when I try to do a live video it cuts out has white noise I don't know what it is but it pops and you can't hear me and lags and um, it's just a slow process so we're doing the best we can with what we got and so maybe if, if we can get out there and you know get the stuff we need uh, maybe we can get a sponsor and get paid for this. I don't know because I really enjoy doing it. But uh, thanks everybody for uh, supporting us. Have a good day.